Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kelly Allen and welcome to this week's video. So this week's video is not planned in any way. It's not, you know, what I'm about to show you in this video isn't really revolutionary. It's just kind of the key things that I find myself going back to over and over and over again when I need things on Amazon or just when I'm generally reaching for stuff plant related. So this video is basically, you know, my top picks for Amazon plant related things. I haven't really titled it yet, can you tell? So I do have a few things to show you. I'm just gonna talk about them in a very, very chilled manner and there's no particular order to it. I don't even know if I've got 10 things. Right, I don't know what to start with. Okay, I know what to start with. So my first item that I honestly think every single plant person should kind of have from Amazon is one of these. You are probably very, very, very sick of hearing me talk about these by now. And if you haven't seen this or you have no idea what it is, hi, you must be new. Where have you been? Because this is a moisture meter. What does it do? You stick this into the soil in your pot and it will tell you how moist or wet or dry that your soil is. Now I know a lot of people have a problem here because we doesn't matter what house plant it is in the world, the general care for most house plants, unless it's like a succulent or a cactus, is, you know, keep it moist, but let it dry out. What, please? What does that even mean? I don't even know. Like is moist and damp the same thing? Probably, maybe, I don't know. This device will at least help decipher what all these companies are telling us. It has dry, moist, and wet. And if you have the dial is in the moist, then it's moist. And basically for different types of plants, I learned the numbers that they should get to before they need a watering. It is super, super cheap, guys. Honestly, I don't know what it is in American dollars, but you can get these all over Amazon for a very, very affordable price. Not only that, but they don't even have batteries, so they will always work. I mean, technically you have to be careful that the, the pins on here don't rust. But apart from that, it's absolutely fine. Mine actually has a pH and a light dial on here. So if I just flick, you know, between the dial, it will show me different things. But I only really use it for the moisture meter aspect of it. If you're struggling with overwatering, I'm begging you to pick one of these up. I know a lot of people have picked one of these up from my previous videos and they're always telling me like, oh my gosh, it's it saved all my plants. It's made such a difference. So if you're struggling with overwatering or maybe even underwatering, have a look at one of these. They're super affordable. I will obviously leave the links below to anything I mentioned in this video, but these are fantastic please get one. Right, the second thing I'm just gonna pull out because it's next to me on the table. This isn't something that nearly everybody should use, but it's something that I find myself using a lot. And honestly, it's quite handy. It's definitely handy if you're more on the YouTube side of things, or if you film, or you need to do other stuff while you're repotting. This is a really, really good thing to have. And basically, it's just rubber gloves. Now, everybody has seen me use these rubber gloves in my videos. I kind of need it. One, I have like, you probably can't see here, and how close I can get, but I have like super, super long nails and they they really, you know, soil gets under them. It's not hygienic. It, I have to then go scrub my nails. It's this, I don't need to do any of that. I can just wear a pair of these and then, you know, when I'm done, I chuck them away, job done. I'm pretty sure you can get these in different sizes. I haven't checked. I'm pretty sure mine are, yeah, they're a small. And they're blue, obviously, just for safety so they don't, you know, get stuck in food. Not that I'm gonna get my gloves stuck in food, but there you go. So if for whatever reason, you know, you're allergic to something that you're using or you just don't wanna have as much hassle, then please consider getting some gloves because honestly, it really, really helps. And there's so many, I don't actually know how many there are in here. It says 100 quantity, so I'm assuming that means 100 pairs and not 100 gloves, so 50 pairs. So please consider that if you are just, you're not a fan of the mess, you know? Because I'm certainly not. Right, what else we got? Uh, ooh, something seasonal. Right, I've started using these. I bought one to test it out and then I bought a second one because I liked it and it actually happens to fit on my shelves perfectly. If you don't know what shelves I'm talking about, I'm talking about the IKEA Bitstro shelves that I have that are fitted with grow lights next door in my office. But this is just fantastic. And it is definitely something you probably want for this time of year. I'm not recommending this one specifically. It's just, you know, the one that I have and it's a good size for me. But this here is a heat mat and it plugs into the wall. For you Americans, there's our UK plugs for you. I'm sure you'll be able to get the American version. I don't doubt that for a second. So if you wanna follow my link below to, to you know the heat mat and see if there's a US version, that's absolutely fine. But get yourself a heat mat. This is a particularly good one. I can't remember what brand it is. I wish I'd kept the box. It doesn't even say. It doesn't heat up too warm. I don't know what temperature it does heat up to. Does it even say? It probably does, you know. Does it? Does it at all? 
I can't say anything about what temperature it goes to, guys. I don't want to read this for 20 minutes. But it honestly, it doesn't go too hot. I've got mine sat on wood, technically, and it's absolutely fine. I tested this out on my kitchen bench with a laptop, like over the top of it, like switched off in a laptop bag. And it was absolutely fine. It didn't overheat or anything. It's pretty fantastic. You can get a few things on here. No, it's not, you know, a solution for everything. But certainly for me, I put everything that I'm propagating on here. It's super, super handy. And obviously with winter coming, it's a great way to heat your plants without obviously going down the central heating route, which none of us want to do. So if you are considering buying a heat mat, there are small options there. There's probably much bigger ones um, out there as well, but these are just the ones that I use because as I say, they fit on my shelves so well. I've had this one about two weeks. I think I had the other one a week prior to that. And I have seen, by the way, a major difference in the growth of my plants. Like it's, it's crazy how much they've grown. The one thing I will say is if you have, you know, containers that aren't covered over, so they aren't like cling filmed or something isn't growing in a bag, you need to be very diligent with your watering because this will dry stuff out much, much faster. So if you're gonna use this, please be aware of that and check on your plants a lot more, like four times more than what you would normally check them because this can dry out. Do be diligent with your watering, but these heat mats are great and I totally recommend them. Oh, this one's a good one. Okay, so my next recommendation actually has two uses and I didn't think about this initially until somebody else suggested it. This here is is a pressure sprayer. So what you can do with this is, I don't think I can actually do this on camera because I think I'm gonna spray neem everywhere because I'm pretty sure that's what's in here. But basically, you fill in whatever you want in here, you pump it so it gets pressure, until it gets hard. And then when you're ready, you can spray. But not only can you spray it, you can actually hold, you can push this nozzle in here and you can hold it down and you can continuously spray. So you can put your nozzle in and then just do this and spray all your plants with, you know, neem or whatever it is you're gonna spray them with. And that is one use for it. And I'm pretty sure that's actually the intended, you know, primary use for this. But what I thought about the other day when I was trying to spray, you know, all the plants in my office with a little spray bottle, I realized that you could probably 100% use this to get your humidity up. And it's a lot easier than going around with a spray bottle and doing this, you know, 20 million times a minute. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna buy a second one of these and I'm going to just keep water in it so I can just, you know, humidify my plants, minimum effort. You won't have to fill it up very often. Honestly, it lasts forever. You will have to keep pumping it, but you know, that's to be expected. But it's an all round great, great, product to use. I recommend going down this route if you want to administer, you know, neem on your plants, but if it's just for the humidity route, you could just get a spray bottle. I'm not saying, you know, there's anything wrong with that. I used to use them. I still do use them, but for a large scale, like maybe, you know, at my shop, I would definitely consider getting a large one of these just for humidity. In fact, I need to order that like as soon as possible. <laughs> it does have instructions on the side of the bottle as well. So that helps. Oh, it has warnings too. Lovely. <laughs> it says on the side of this bottle, I'm not kidding. It says, please use responsibly, know your limits. What do they think of putting in here? Look, look, just in case you think I'm joking. There you go. Please use responsibly, know your limits. Nice, nice. Don't put alcohol in it. The next thing, I'll be honest, I don't use these anymore, but I did for a long time. And it'll be obvious when I show you the next thing, you know, the next product, why I don't use these anymore. I'm gonna get one out of the bag because the bag's just gonna be unnecessarily noisy. You will have seen these before, but you'll have seen it in a video like long ago. And that is one of these. These don't look like much. I will try and show it to the camera, like so. These are kind of little discs or little, you know, mesh gauze, whatever you want to call them. These are actually plastic, but you can get more wiry ones. And you put these in your plant pot at the bottom. So all of the terracotta pots you might have with, you know, a drainage hole in the bottom that's like quite big. You don't want any soil getting through there. Basically, you put one of these in the bottom and, you know, your soil's not going to fall out. They're completely reusable. They were cheap as anything. I can't remember how much they were. I think I looked briefly before this video and I'm not sure I could find the link to the original ones I bought. But honestly, there's a million and one things just like this. I know a lot of you guys use pottery and things like that. I don't really have any pottery to smash up to use. So for me, these are probably the best thing. As I say, I don't use them anymore and you'll see why in just a second. But if I was gonna use them, because I do still have some terracotta pots, I would 100% consider sticking one of these in the bottom. I don't know how many I got in a pack. Does it say 50? Not necessary. If you can find a better alternative, then go for it. But you know, I wouldn't say these were wasteful as they are completely and utterly reusable, um, being plastic and everything, but. So I don't know what you even officially call them. What does it say they are? It says flower pot mat prevent soil. So <laughs> take from that what you will. Very small. Not everyone would have a use for these depending on what you think of what I'm about to show you now, but you might find a use for them. 
I used to use them at one point. There you go. Okay, let me put them here. So the next thing that I absolutely stand by, recommend, know and love are my plant pots from Amazon, okay? I have a lot of plants. And apart from my really big plants that are normally like sat on my floor, generally a lot of the plants I have are kind of the same size and they need the same size pot. And I changed them too quickly. And at one point I had way too many plants to keep buying like really nice pots. So I really wanted a solution for that. Not only that, but obviously I didn't want to keep taking them to the sink to drain them because that used to just take me forever, literally forever when I was watering all my plants. So what I decided to do was I decided to go, this is a while now, I decided to go on the hunt for some plant pots and I did find some and I found this set. I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> I think they're called tea for you or something like that. I found these plant pots with saucers. Honestly though, these plant pots are so strong that I cannot crush them with my hand and that's just the small. They do a few different sizes and I think they do two different colors. These are like the slate gray ones. I know they have like a creamy white one. Um, I think I asked a few subscribers like a long time ago, oh, if you get the white ones, let me know, you know, how white they are. And apparently they're more of a cream, so bear that in mind. But these are the slate gray ones. They do have, you know, plenty of drainage in the bottom there. They do have a little tray. Mine is a little bit dirty because I've had a plant in there. No shame. So they have a small one here. Let me just get out the trays. Eh. They have a small here. They then have the next size up, which is a medium, I do think. I'm not sure on the exact size of these pots, but I know that on the listing, it does tell you. So I have a small there, a medium there. I'll just pop that on there. Ooh. And then a lot of the time I use these because my arides are obviously growing. This is the large, so they all have drip trays. The trays on these don't quite fit as well as the trays on these, but they're still very, very good. They're still super sturdy. They all have the same drainage in the bottom, so that's just the same as the other ones as well. I find them really, really handy. And honestly, if you just have too many plants to care about the pots and it's more about, you know, how, like maybe how I have them on my shelves where it's just, the plants speak for themselves or whatever have you, because I know a lot of people are into that. I know I kind of am. These are really, really good. Recently, recently, because I have been getting, shall we say, a lot more rare things, you know, into the house, um, I've been changing up what I like to use for my plant pots. And I, I, I'm pretty sure this changes here to stay, if I'm honest, because now I like to see how my roots are doing. So you may know where I'm going with this, but now I actually get these. These are orchid pots and these are also like, I can't squish these either. These are super, super strong. And I can see obviously all the roots of my plants in my pots. The one thing I don't love about these honestly is the drainage. I'll try and show you. There's not really much drainage on the bottom and there is some on the side there. That's kind of fine. And obviously I understand that they're designed for orchids. So they're not really designed for aroids. I really appreciate and my anxiety over all these unicorns really appreciates having a clear pot to, you know, see your roots. So if there's a problem, you'll see. If it's dry, you'll see. If it's getting, you know, pot bound, you'll see. So it's really, really good for that. They have loads of different sizes. I can't remember what this one is. Oh no, it says they're 13 centimeters. <laughs> loads of different sizes. They're clear. They are super strong because I do not like buying things that aren't strong. Again, with any of these products, I deeply apologize if you can't get them in the USA, but maybe you can get something similar. Do you know what I mean? If you can't find this exact thing, then you might be able to find something similar. I think that is actually it for this video. I would like to mention that I actually get nearly all of my potting supplies from Amazon. So I get my perlite from there. I get my sphagnum moss from there. I get my worm castings from there. I get my charcoal from there. I occasionally get my orchid bark from there. I get my coir from there as well. So if you look on Amazon, and again, I will leave the links below, that you can get nearly anything you need. Before I go, I would just like to say that yes, I have not included any grow lights in this video. And honestly, that is because I have spent the last three weeks researching grow lights for y'all and I really need to make sure that I recommend the right kind of stuff. I feel like grow lights are a really big topic. You know, there's a lot to learn. What does it all mean? Which ones are right? What are the high budget options, the low budget options? You know, help me make sense of it. 
That is why I haven't included any grow lights in this video. It will be a separate video. So if you came here for grow lights, I'm honestly very sorry. I think I do still have links in my description for old grow lights that I've used. But generally speaking, right now, I'm looking into the whole grow lights thing. So you will get like a dedicated video on that very, very soon. I would love to say next week, but I'm I'm not, you know, certain on that. So don't, you know, don't take that and run with it. But I am looking into it. I just wanted to make sure I got all that right. So that was my list for, you know, my top Amazon picks. If you're a plant person, there will probably be loads more on this list that I could have included. Like, for example, I could have included the mosquito dunks that I use for gnats, maybe the, um, the gnat tape, the yellow tape that I use in my pots. But I just wanted to keep it to the more generic stuff that nearly everybody can use just so it's, you know, you get more out of this video than me just suggesting everything that's under the sun. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you, if even only a little bit. Please do try some of the things that I've mentioned, because honestly, it makes a huge difference to me. So I can only imagine it would make a big difference to somebody else. If you have any video requests, please leave them in the comments below. And I will see you next week. Bye, guys.